Can we begin by going back all the way to Palakkad, sir? Well, I belong to that species of human being called the Palgar Brahmin. As I am fond of telling my audiences, the Palgar Brahmin comes in four varieties. They are cooks, they are crooks, they are civil servants or they are musicians. These are the four varieties. I belong a little bit to each of these. I am certainly a good cook. I am probably a crook. I have been a civil servant and I know I am not a musician, but I know enough to appreciate music. Palghat has got 92 Brahmin villages called Agraharams. These are settlements of people who migrated four or five hundred years ago from the eastern parts of Tamil Nadu. When they became superfluous to the requirements of Brahmins in the locality, they shipped, migrated to Kerala. My father belonged to a very ordinary middle class family. My grandfather lived, made his living by the few lands he had and what not. And my father studied and became an advocate. By his own dint of his own effort, he became studied and became an advocate and started practicing in Palgar. He was an advocate with a, a fairly good practice. He didn't do anything except civil practice. I was the last of a family of six children. I had one elder brother and four elder sisters. My elder brother was also in the civil service. He also became a senior civil servant and retired finally as advisor to the government of the governor of Tamil Nadu back in 1980. We had four sisters in between. They were married off and settled in various places. I was, I have two dates of birth as I'm fond of telling my audiences. I have a real date of birth, which is 15th of May, 1933. But in the official records, my date of birth is given as 15th of December, 1932. Because they changed my date of birth in order to make sure that I did not have to stammer at the end of school for not being old enough to join college. So I joined in 1938 or 37, 38 in the Palgar Basel Evangelical Mission School school at a stone's throw from our house, all Christian education. I did enter, enter school at 1947 and in 1947 I wrote the end of school exam twice. Two years later, I wrote the intermediate exam from the government Victoria College, Palgar. I wrote that exam twice. And before you come to conclusions about my intellectual abilities, I must tell you that in both those years, the exam had to be written twice because the question papers leaked. 1949, I passed out the intermediate and I promise you I did not get the question paper second time around. And I passed fairly well and I thought I, my movement into the engineering colleges was guaranteed because my marks were 150, 150, 150 out of 150, 150, 150 in physics, mathematics and chemistry. Unfortunately, even in those days, these things used to work about forward communities and backward communities and one method of keeping the forward community out was to ask them to appear for an interview. So I appeared at an interview for admission to the engineering college and the question they asked me was fantastically engineering oriented. They said, Shivaji Ganesh and Tadima. So I said, yes, Tadima. I thought I had passed. Next question was, our revolver Palatal Naditir Garar. Now that was beyond my depth and so I lost, I failed. So they would not give me an engineering seat. Therefore, I ended up studying physics at the Madras Christian College from 1949 to 52. I studied in Christian College, I studied in the hostel. And in 1952, I passed out fairly well. And my principal, <laughs> Scotch gentleman called Dr. Boyd, called me and said, I had studied so well, I had passed so well, would I like to become a teacher in the college itself? So they first offered me a demonstrator's job in the college and subsequently gave me a tutor's, uh, a lecturer's job in the Christian college. So I taught physics at the Madras Christian College from 1952 to 55. In those days, the number of laboratories available for a student of science, particularly of physics, were very, very, very few. Today, there are hundreds of labs. In those days, there were very few. So then, uh, uh, writing the competitive exam was the ob obvious answer. 
So in 1953, I wrote the police service exam. I passed out all India first. But I decided not to join the police. And so I stuck out and in 1954, I wrote the IAS exam again. 54, I passed out fairly high. And I joined the IAS in 1955. I was allotted to the, what was then called Madras, but today Tamil Nadu, Madras, cadre of the IAS. And after years uh, training at the training school in Delhi, I came to Coimbatore for district training in 1956. And then uh, subsequently I was a civil servant for 35, 36 years. I don't know whether it is your intention to listen to me from all that I did or did not do in the civil service in 1956. I did Coimbatore as assistant collector under training. When I finished my training in 1957, I was posted to Dindical in 1957, May or April, I forget, April, May, I think. Within a week of joining in the district, I had a brush with the minister. The minister asked me to do something and I said, thank you very much, I won't. So in the middle of nowhere, he threw me out of his car and I stood under a tree for the best part of two hours until some passing jeep took pity on me and took me away. That was in way back in 57. 58, I moved to Madras to the Secretariat in Rural Development where I worked till 62. 62 to 64 and 65 January, I was Director of Transport. 65 January, government sent me to Mother as collector. Those were difficult times. 1965 January was when the anti-Hindi riots broke out. And the epicenter of the trouble was Madurai, where I was collector. But there it was, it was part of this day's game. Two, three months later, government gave me the added responsibility of looking after Mr. Sheikh Abdullah. Mr. Sheikh Abdullah was asked to come and stay at Kodekanal, and I was asked to look after him. I was collector of Madurai from 1965 to 1967. In 1967, I Government sent me to Harvard, where I did a degree in public administration from the Kennedy School of Government from 1967 to 68. When I landed back in 68, the government, as is wont, sent me right out of the world into atomic energy at Bombay. I went to Bombay as Deputy Secretary in Atomic Energy in 1968 to work under Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. I worked there for four years. In 1971, December, Vikram Sarabhai died. So in 1972, Mrs. Gandhi split the Department of Atomic Energy into two halves, the Atomic Energy half and the Space half. And she asked me to go with the Space portion to Bangalore. So I went in 72 to Bangalore to the Space Department to work under Professor Satish Dhawan. Worked there for four years till 76 when the president's rule was imposed in Madras. They were called, some of us were called back, and I was one of them. 76, I came back to Madras as industry secretary. 77, when the popular government came in, I was moved from industry to agriculture. 78, I moved out of Tamil Nadu and went away to the ONGC as member in charge of personnel. A year or two later, I found that I had run out of work, so I went to the prime minister and pleaded with more work. So she sent me back to the Space Department in 1980, where I worked till 1985. 84 October, Mrs. Gandhi got killed. Rajiv Gandhi became Prime Minister in 85. January, he made me Secretary in charge, first of Forest and Wildlife. A couple of months later, he gave me also Environment. So I was Secretary Environment and Forest and Wildlife from 85 till about 87. Uh, in 88, in fact, in 87, he gave me the added responsibility of looking after his own security. I was in charge of the PM security from 87 to 88 to 89. From environment, I moved to defense. From defense, I moved to cabinet secretary. And when Rajiv Gandhi lost his election, Mr. V.P. Singh became prime minister. I was moved out of the cabinet secretary's job and made member of the planning commission, a job without too much work. Uh, I stayed there for about a year and towards the end of 90, when Mr. V.P. Singh was replaced by Mr. Chandrasekhar as Prime Minister, they called me in and made me Chief Election Commissioner of India. 
I worked there from 1990 December to 1996 December. I retired in 96 December. I shifted back to Madras in 98 July. And since then I have been in retirement. Doing very little except probably giving lectures here and there, teaching some colleges and schools. Nothing very much else. Now that roughly gives me the life, my life story. So given that your father was a lawyer, law was not, not something that didn't fascinate you too much for you to have law did fascinate me but not necessarily as a profession uh, the uh, i mean no, i'm not looking down upon the law profession or the lawyers at all the very noble profession very difficult to very some of the world's best people have come out of the legal profession but uh, no i suppose familiarity breeds a certain amount of non respect so that is what has happened So during my research, I read somewhere that uh, during the span of one day, you were moved from six to six oh, different departments. In 1962, second of June, 1962, I was in rural development, and I had a quasi-political boss. The Joint Development Commission was a political person. He and I had a disagreement of sorts. So I told him, I said, I'm off. I had worked in rural development for four years. I had worked very, very hard. I thought I was not receiving appreciation, so I said, I'm off. Whereupon Chief Secretary Shahari Gopal Sami of the ICS got very angry with me. So within the course of the next three, four, five hours, I got shifted once, twice, thrice, four times, five times, six times. At 10 o'clock, I was in rural development. At 11 o'clock, I was in finance. At 11.30, I was in small savings. At 12 o'clock, I was in agriculture. At two o'clock, I was in social welfare. When I came home, I was director of women's welfare. But that was part of life. So you've occupied so many different roles in your career. What do you cherish the most? What I cherish most is the fact that I have... If you're going to give a simple answer to that question, I suppose the thing which I have cherished most is the fact that I have been fiercely independent, that I have never given one millimeter of yield to integrity. And I don't have to possess a single rupee, which is a false rupee. That uh, one of my bosses once called me and said, Session, why is it that the single largest sentiment you evoke in people is fear? I know that I try to get people to get afraid of me. But uh, what I cherish most is the rigid, attention to integrity.